So as you probably already know, grow lights are unbelievably useful for growing plants indoors. But if you don't have them set up correctly, then you're not really going to be getting much benefit from them. What we're going to be doing in this video is covering two key questions that come up in relation to grow lights all the time. The first question that we're going to be looking at is how long should your grow lights actually be turned on for every day? And we'll be exploring the concept of photoperiodism there. The second question that we're going to be looking at today is what is the correct distance that your grow lights should be from your plants. Guys, my name's Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf where we specialize in helping city dwellers grow their own food and reconnect with nature. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, then you know what to do. Listen, as some of you guys will already know, we do like to get a little bit geeky around here, but please, I really, really hope you'll stick with me today because I promise you it is gonna be worth it. Once you get your head around some of this terminology, I can assure you that grow lights are not nearly as intimidating as what you might think. Now, in order to understand this whole concept and make it really, really easy to digest, uh, what I've done is actually come up with a really, really simple analogy to explain grow lights and plants. And that analogy involves buckets or sprinklers. But because I'm stuck in a New York City apartment, I'm gonna use a spray bottle and a glass instead. Now, the first thing that we need to understand here is that plants consume light. It's like their source of food. And just like all of us humans have a uh, daily calorie requirement, plants also have a daily light requirement or usually a range uh, that they like to be consuming on a daily basis. And that daily light requirement is what we uh, describe with the term DLI or daily light integral. Now, all plants, as I said, have a specific DLI requirement. Uh, for decorative plants, like some of the ones I have behind me here, uh, they're generally gonna have a DLI requirement in the range of one to maybe four uh, moles per meter squared per day. Things like leafy greens, for example, lettuce and basils, they're generally gonna be in the 10, maybe up to 15, 18 type range. But if you're talking about fruiting and flowering crops, they may have a DLI requirement anywhere from 15 up to about 30. Okay, so that's concept one. DLI is basically volume. That's kind of equivalent to the volume of a bucket. Let's say, for example, here, we're talking about 10 gallons, okay? Now, the next concept that we need to understand is duration. Uh, and as we talked about in this video, uh, a concept called photoperiodism explains how plants respond to different durations of light. Most plants, either what's known as a long day plant or a short day plant. And essentially what this tells us is whether they require a short or a long period of darkness in order to flower. We can actually go through and then divide all of our edible plant types or categories into one of these two different columns and you know come up with two different lists as I've shown here. The other thing we need to understand about photoperiodism is we need to understand whether or not flowering is actually something that's desirable, right? So if you're talking about something like a tomato or a pepper, then flowering is very desirable because it is the flower that goes on to become the fruit. If there's no fruit, there's no flower. So for those sort of plants, you definitely uh, do want them to flower. And because of that, you should give them their preferred light duration, whether it's short or long. However, there are plenty of examples of plants where for our benefit as the you know, cultivators or gardeners of these plants, we actually don't want them to flower because when they flower, they do what's called bolting and that's kind of the end of them. So examples of that might be lettuce, basil and cilantro, right? Now, if you have a plant where flowering is not desirable, then rather than give them their preferred day duration, you actually want to do the opposite because by doing the opposite, you are going to be naturally inhibiting that plant from turning to flower. All right, are you with me so far? 
If this is feeling a little bit whelming, don't worry, because I have included a link below that kind of spells all this out step by step. But the other thing that we've done here that I just wanted to show you guys quickly, we've put together this little spreadsheet to actually show you exactly what sort of plant is and help you understand what the optimal light arrangement is for each of these plants as well. So literally the only thing you need to do in order to drive this entire spreadsheet is just select what plant type you're interested in growing here. So so if we pick basil, for example, what our spreadsheet then does is use a whole lot of fancy formulas and equations to populate everything below that. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that we're indicating whether the plant is a short day or long day. And in the case of basil, that's a long day plant. Then we indicate whether or not it is flowering. And that tells us whether we should give the optimal light duration or the suboptimal light duration. In other words, should we be you know, above or below 12 hours? And based on that recommendation, and again, taking basil as the example here, what the spreadsheet is saying is that to inhibit flowering in basil as a long day plant, what you wanna do is try to limit the light duration, ideally keeping it below 12 hours if you can. Now, as you can see here, the shaded cells indicate the range of recommended light requirements. Obviously, if you have a slightly longer duration, then you're going to need slightly less intensity of light and vice versa. Now, going Going back to our bucket analogy for a minute, what we've done is, here is essentially tell you in the form of this DLI number, is we've told you that we have a bucket, which is our plant, and that it needs 10 gallons to put in it, okay? That is the DLI number. Now, what this whole spreadsheet is doing and this whole light duration concept is it's basically telling you if you have a 10 gallon bucket here, how much time do you have to fill that bucket, okay? So the, that's what all of the values on this table here are about. Now let's go back to our bucket and say, okay, we've got a 10 gallon bucket. I'm gonna use some round numbers to keep the math simple here. But let's say I give you exactly five hours to fill that bucket. No more, no less. You have to fill a 10 gallon bucket in five hours. What are you gonna do? Well, the math is pretty simple, right? You would just go 10 divided by five equals two gallons per hour. If you fill that bucket at a rate of two gallons per hour for five hours, two times five equals 10, and you'll end up with your 10 gallons. Now, exactly the same math mathematical concepts apply here, right? So instead of uh, gallons per hour, in the case of our bucket, what we do for grow lights is we use PPFD, or photosynthetic photon flux density. Uh, the units of that are micromoles per meter squared per second. Back to the bucket analogy for a second. Think of your grow light like a sprinkler head, okay? It's sending water or light in all different directions. Now, obviously, if we're standing right up close, we would get absolutely saturated very, very quickly. But if you move the bucket further away, then the rate of flow that you are encountering would reduce. So let me ask you another question. What happens if we were to double the flow rate on the sprinkler? Well, if you double the flow rate, then instead of filling the bucket at two gallons an hour, you're now filling the bucket at four gallons per hour. Therefore, instead of needing five, ga five hours to fill it, sorry, you'd actually only need two and a half, right? But if you wanted to get back to a five hour fill time, what are you gonna do? you're just gonna move the bucket further away because as you do, the uh, intensity of the water is gonna drop. Again, exactly the same concepts apply for light. Like the names and the numbers and the terminology is different, but the concepts are exactly the same. So we measured uh, volume for plant light in DLI. We measured the rate of flow in PPFD and the output of the light itself, which is equivalent to the flow rate of a sprinkler. That number would be measured in PPF or photosynthetic photon flux. Now, as our sprinkler analogy has made Clear, the correct distance between the sprinkler or light and the bucket or the plant leaf is really only a function of two things. Firstly, it's a function of distance. Uh, and secondly, it's a function of the rate of flow that we have, whether it's energy or water coming through either the grow light or the sprinkler, okay? So it's distance and flow rate. They determine how quickly that bucket is getting filled. And that is also the same two determinants of the, the light intensity 
that is landing on your plant leaves. Now, let's bring all these concepts together. What we have done for you guys is put together a couple of tables here that summarize our recommended uh, grow light placements for edible plants. What we've done here is consider a 10, 20, and a 30 watt screw-in style light. And I do need to emphasize here, we're talking about E26 screw-ins because some of the, the assumptions I've made here in this spreadsheet would be a bit different if you're using a different type of grow light. But anyway, I've also shown you a scenario on each of these, both with and without optics. Just on the topic of optics, again, going back to our sprinkler example for a minute, if you have optics and essentially what those optics or lenses are doing is helping channel all of your light in a very, very specific direction, which would be a little bit like doing this on the spray bottle. If you do not have optics, however, then the light distribution is gonna be much wider. And that would be a little bit like doing this with the spray bottle, okay? Or sprinkler, you get the idea. Anyway, as you can see, depending on the power of the grow light, the correct uh, placement or distance for leafy greens could be anywhere from three to 13 inches, all right? Um, we have done the same thing for the fruiting and flowering plants as well. Uh, and again, I've run that at a 10, 20 and a 30 watt grow light scenario. Now, overall, one of the things you're gonna notice with this fruiting and flowering table is that the recommended distances are much closer. Why is that you might ask? Well, simple. It's just because the DLI requirements of those lights are a lot higher. I remember at the beginning, I told you that fruiting and flowering plants have much higher energy or DLI requirements. Well, as a result, they need to be closer to the grow light. Now, if you wanna learn more about uh, the fundamentals of grow lights, then I recommend this video. Uh, and if you're all ready to purchase your first grow light, then check out this one.